time to take a first glimpse at the Battle of Stalingrad. Now usually there are quite heated debates if a breakout of the 6th German army and other encircled units was possible. But I think it's probably better to take a look at some numbers first. So let's take a look at the composition and strength of the German units that got surrounded in Stalingrad right before it was encircled and make a rough comparison to the intended strength of these units in order to get an idea of the overall combat readiness. Furthermore, a look at the composition and number of Soviet forces with a final comparison should give us a good foundation for any further analysis. Now it is common knowledge that the German 6th Army was encircled and destroyed in Stalingrad, but there were other units encircled as well. As usual the sources vary a bit, one source doesn't include a panzer division, another source doesn't list an infantry division, probably cause its units were split among other divisions. Anyway, as always there might be errors, but from what I understand these were the major German divisions that got caught in Stalingrad. 13 regular infantry divisions, 1 Jäger or a light infantry division, 3 motorized divisions which each had one panzer battalion attached and three panzer divisions, which had three panzer battalions each, thus they were among the strongest German panzer divisions in summer 1942. Note that I don't include the Romanian or other units here because I have only very limited data on them. Now the heavy equipment of these units together in mid-November 1942, just prior to the Soviet attack, was as follows. 215 medium anti-tank guns, namely the 50mm Panzerabwehrkanone. 216 heavy anti-tank guns, namely the 75mm pack, 236 panzers, of which about 100 were Panzer IVs, 130 Panzer threes, and the rest was Panzer IIs. 544 light artillery pieces, like the 105mm Leichte Feldhaubitze, and 204 heavy artillery pieces, like the 150mm Schwere Feldhaubitze. These numbers without context give already a hint at the dire situation, but let's look at the intended strength. Although be advised, for 1942 there are many semi-official reorganizations. For instance, for panzer divisions there were some with one, two or three panzer battalions. What I couldn't find was the intended strength for the anti-tank guns, so I can't provide a proper comparison there. Anyway, the calculated intended strength for the other units was 930 tanks. Note that this number is for three panzer divisions and three motorized divisions. The later had one panzer battalion attached each. For the other equipment, the numbers should be around 680 pieces of light artillery and 240 heavy artillery pieces. Thus for the tanks, the actual strength was around 25% of the intended strength, 80% for the light artillery and 85% of the heavy artillery. Note that the number of artillery pieces is very likely too high because probably most batteries were not at full strength. Furthermore, these units had been fighting since late June 1942 and thus were mainly exhausted, had worn out equipment and other factors that affected their combat status. Now let's take a look at the Soviets. The Soviets called their army groups fronts, which sometimes can be a bit confusing. During Operation Uranus, three Soviet fronts broke through the flanks of the 6th Army and encircled it at Stalingrad. These three fronts together were equipped with the following equipment around mid-November 1942. 2307 like anti-tank guns, namely the 45mm anti-tank gun. 2979 multipurpose guns of the caliber 76mm. 1278 howitzers of the caliber 107mm. Yet this number is probably incorrect because there was only a small number of 107mm guns available. Either I missed something or this should be 107mm and above, which would also make sense because no higher caliber is listed in the source, hence the model is a Soviet 122mm howitzer. In terms of tanks the Soviet had 237 heavy tanks, 742 medium tanks and 581 light tanks. Furthermore, the Germans had a handful of the rocket launchers the Nebelwerfer left, whereas the Soviets had about 1400 rocket launchers, but I'm running out of space here. So let's see how the German and Soviet numbers compare with each other. Now in order to fit them all on the screen, each symbol now represents 100 instead of 10 units. In terms of light German anti-tank guns, there were none or at least none mentioned in my sources. 
For the Soviets, there were around 2,300 light anti-tank guns. Note that the classification for light, medium and heavy is a bit problematic, since it was used differently in each country. The Germans had around 220 medium anti-tank guns left, and almost the same amount of heavy anti-tank guns. Whereas the Soviets had around 3000 multi-purpose guns with 76mm, which were also used as artillery. Which brings us to the German light artillery of around 540 pieces and 200 pieces of heavy artillery. In contrast, the Soviets had around 1280 artillery pieces. Next are the tanks. There were no German heavy tanks, whereas the Russians brought about 240. In terms of medium tanks, the Germans had around 240 and the Russians 740. Furthermore, the Germans had around 10 light tanks versus about 580 light Soviet tanks. As you can see, the German panzer units were quite in a dire situation, even before the encirclement. The Soviet forces were considerably stronger, fresh and well supplied. After all, the offensive was postponed several times for logistically and other reasons. Referring to these numbers, I think it is unlikely that the German breakout could have been successful. Maybe the German tanks could have punched a hole into the Soviet lines. But in order to break out successfully, the corridor must be secured against counterattacks, and also the original line must be held to a certain degree to allow for a proper retreat. Additionally, the German stock in fuel, ammo and winter gear and also transport vehicles was depleted considerably too. Although note that this is not the final verdict, because we also need to take a look at the German troops outside the encirclement of Stalingrad, the situation of the air forces and also the general situation in the city itself. Furthermore, although I think it was unlikely that the 6th army could have escaped, Hitler's order to deny Paulus even the attempt was stupid from what I read so far. Because even an unlikely chance to escape is preferable to freezing, starving and fighting to death, which was certain considering the logistical situation. Thank you for watching. If you liked what you saw, consider commenting, liking and subscribing. Also thanks a lot to my Patreons, you helped me a lot, because I can now invest more money in books. And for those who don't have seen my other videos already, please check them out. And see you next time.